Hey y'all, I'm Jules. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me as always is the Spirit Doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey Kelly, how's it going? Hey Jules, it's going great. I just got back from a trip to uh, just outside of Panama City to a place called uh, Playa Caracol. And I was doing research on my way uh, on retreat centers for getting ready to start doing retreats oh, nice. again. Yeah. So it was, it was very good. So yeah, if you've been watching my TikToks, you've seen all of the cool stuff, including the fire on the side of the road, the fireworks over the party, the beach that where the waves beat the living crap out of me. We did not film that. And <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just a, a whole lot of fun that we had along the way. So, um, but the, the really cool thing is that I met someone at the party who owns a uh, venue and uh, I'm talking with him right now about putting together a retreat. And I'm going to give you guys a little hint because I never tell anybody this stuff in advance, but I am going to tell you guys. So as part of this Shh, whole, don't tell anybody. Shh. Yeah, sh part of this whole, uh, you know, welcome to the woo uh, transition to working with people who are uh, spiritual practitioners. I am looking at doing retreats that are, you know, a few months of work in advance to give you the basics that you need. And then we do the more advanced stuff on site during the retreat. And so I'm looking, I've, I've got several ideas for like deep dives. I don't know what I'm going to call them, like, like seminars or something, but it'll be more fun. Anyway, the, the upshot is that I, I went to this venue and it's the, and the energy is fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not amazing. Right. And I talked to the guy who owns it and he also lives on site and he is, uh, you know, he's, one of us. He's one of the woos, right? And so he's a woo. He's a woo. And so he didn't know what that meant, though. <laughs> I had to explain to him what it meant. But um, <laughs> but I talked to him, and I'm like, you know, this would be the perfect place to get people together and teach them how to do advanced space engineering, right? So working on the energetics of a space from clearing it to setting it, to protecting it, and doing the whole nine yards. Everything from grids, to ley lines, to entity removal, to vortices, to uh, a, the energetic engineering of the space in terms of setting it, and how do you make it do what you want it to do. And this is a commercial property, so how do you account for lots and lots of random people coming through? How do you account for it being his home too? You know, the whole thing, right? They're, they're, so we would do this full on course in advance of all the basic techniques. And then as a group, we would do the space setting on this property and walk through the process together and learn how to do the different pieces. And each at each stage, you know, you meditate, you tap into the energy and then you you like, okay, I know what it feels like. And then you do the next piece and then you do some meditation and you get to feel what the, what it feels like after you've done the next piece. And then, you know, so we have to let everything sort of percolate through. So you do, you know, half a day will be doing the work and half a day will be doing fun things in Panama. Right. And so it's, it gets to be a, an educational space and it gets to be a recreational space. And so you get to have your downtime and you get to learn something really cool and really new. And I've never seen anybody teach a class like this before. So I'm super excited to do it. So we're talking That'll about it. That'll be fun. Yeah, it's, it's very early stages of development, but I just wanted to let you guys know that it's out there and percolating. If this is something that's interesting to you and you really want it, let me know. Um, so that that way I know where to put it on the priority charts, right? And if nobody says, oh my God, that sounds amazing, then I may not do it. But, you know, this is my way of saying, hey, is this something you're interested in? Let me know, right? So you can either post in the Facebook group and let me know if it's interesting, or you can post, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can put it as a comment on YouTube. You can comment on, you know, it, you can send it in to kelly at kellysparta.com and that'll get to me. 
Um, however you want to comment, I'm happy to hear from you. Just let me know if this is something that you would actually attend. Um, and that way, you know, please you know, please delineate between, wow, that sounds really cool, I wish I could go, and wow, that sounds really good, cool, I would definitely go, right? So please delineate that for me because it's one thing to say, yeah, I think that's really cool, and it's another thing to, for me to know who would actually sign up, right? So, yeah. um, so we also have a listener question. That, that is about how do you pick your tarot card or oracle deck? And uh -huh. now Jules and I, this was, this was listed as an episode in our, in our chart for today. And, and we both went, didn't we do this? I swear we did this. And we, we had an episode we did on runes and, and, and all of that. But um, I don't know if we answered this question. And if we did, well, then you're going to get a second answer. But I'm going to answer this question. There you go. After I take a sip of my water. Yes. So uh, how do you pick an, a, a tarot card or oracle deck? The cards usually call to you, right? There's, you'll get a sense of the cards. You, when you look at them, you're like, whoa, you know, um, and you just like feel like, oh, I really need that. Uh, so that's one. The other piece is to think about what it is that you want the cards to do for you, right? So, for instance, my Crystal Allies deck is very good for emotional content, right? So if I'm trying to get an emotional issue, I pull that card deck out. Uh, my, my power deck is for go figure power issues. Mm. <laughs> uh, itch, itch, itch. Okay. Um, the, my back itch, sorry. The, uh, the Rider Waite deck is particularly good, or any sort of traditional tarot deck is particularly good for sort of day-to-day uh, -day physical reality, what's going to happen sort of stuff, right? Um, and then the fairy oracle is good for, you know, the, talking to the fae and getting sort of a different perspective on things and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the sacred path oracle is good for getting a deeper understanding with a more connection to nature and a more Native American approach to people, to things. These are all mm -hmm. the decks that I use personally. Yep. And then the sock monkey oracle is just good for overall life sort of stuff. Um, and just getting a quick fix on stuff. I, I found it to be really, really useful in that regard. So these are all decks that I personally use. And, you know, you will find that your your choices and your, your outcomes will vary depending upon how you become in, how you come into relationship in these with these cards. Okay. And I apologize, but we didn't write down who, who asked that question. So thank you very much for the question. And I'm so thank sorry you. I don't get to credit you with it. I tried <laughs> to go back and find it and I couldn't. So I apologize. Um, okay. So let's talk about today's topic, which is transcending good versus evil. And I think this is particularly poignant <laughs> or on, on the nose for what's going on in the U.S. right now uh, with the the polarization and the thing about the polarization of politics, and I'm, I'm not going to take sides here because Jules and I are completely opposite sides of the, the thing here. But so, you know, and we still like each other. So We're that's absolutely. Right? <laughs> so, but <laughs> I don't want to talk about the sides per se. I want to talk about the polarization, right? Because the polarization is the problem, not the sides. You know, Keeping when, us divided. That's what you yes. mean by polarization. Like, yeah. it's just this side literally versus this side. Yes. And that's the focus instead yes. of said issues. Yes. Or even, even not even that, right? So, okay. So, so one of the first things that you have to recognize in any sort of uh, power dynamic situation is that the way that you keep control over people is you make them scared. And then you give them an enemy to focus on that isn't the person who's creating the problem. Okay. So that's, that's a well-known dynamic in all sorts of back, you know, history, historical contexts, right? Um, and so the thing that you have to be careful of is anytime someone has pointed at someone and said they are an other, right? They are not us. They are an other. They are something other than us. Okay. That is when you are being manipulated to be fearful. 
and you're being manipulated to believe in a path that is either the thing you most want to believe or the thing you are most scared is true. And this is a magical thing that they are doing. Okay. They are doing magic and I don't even, I'm not going to point at the they, this is going to be the other thing. They in this, so if we're going to transcend this, I need you to understand and hear me because I've had another listener who has been contacting me and saying, we need to stand up. We need to do something. You know, we're being manipulated, blah, 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 blah. And she's right. We are, but there's, but making the person or the people or the conglomerate or whoever the hell you think it is, right? Because we don't have any way of truly knowing that, right? It, making them the other doesn't solve the problem, right? That's still othering. The moment you are othering, you are in the dynamic. And it doesn't matter who you're pointing at as the other, you're in the dynamic. You are not transcending the dynamic, okay? So there is a place where you really need to step outside of the dynamic of othering. You need to step out of uh, my side's good, that side's bad. Both sides are being screwed by this big overseer, overlord, whatever bullshit thing, right? You know, and I'm not saying it's bullshit because I'm, I have no doubt that there are people in power who are manipulating all of this, right? But I don't care, right? <laughs> I don't care. Right. And so, you know, if you're in that space, if you are in a righteousness, if you are in a victim space, if you are in a anger, you know, being manipulated, blah, blah, blah space, you are still in the dynamic, right? You have not stepped out of it. Um, and I, I want to say, I want to be really clear that it is very difficult to step outside of that dynamic in the U.S. right now. I literally left the country to make sure that I could do it. Okay. It was, I, I, the energies were terrible. I didn't want to be in them. They were, you know, there was just so much just seeping in despite the me re reinforcing my words over and over again. I want to be very clear. It's very difficult. And so I'm, I, I want you to know that I get it. Okay. And this is where the true learning is coming from in order to step into a spiritual space on this duality duality is the problem okay okay us versus them, on that good one. versus evil up versus down black <laughs> versus white whatever it is right duality is the problem right we are not in opposition to ourselves we are all one that is the spiritual truth of it we are both sides. We are the overlords. We are the planet. We are everything, right? And we are forgetting that and we are making ourselves smaller doing so. Okay? We are making ourselves smaller. We are, we are taking all of what we are jointly together, synchronistically, and we are splitting it into fragmented pieces. And it is not serving us spiritually it is not serving the planet it is not serving the u.s as a country in canada because canada is doing this too this is happening in a lot of places um it is not serving to be in this us versus them dynamic okay the key is to remember that the person that you think of as them as other is you okay I am you, you are me, and we are all together. The Beatles had it right, right? <laughs> <laughs> Transcendental meditation, man. That's where they came from. So this is the thing. You have to step above it, right? The difference, so, so there, there are two levels here, right? There's duality, which is us versus them, up versus down, black versus white, in versus out, you know, whatever, right? And then you have the experiential level, which exists above that. And the experiential level says, this is all just an experience, right? I'm not going to designate it good or bad. It, it, it just is, right? Okay. 
All right. And so to, to be in this space and to, to say, oh, hmm, look at that. This is, this is what's meant to be in this moment. What if you step into this is what's meant to be in this moment? So is it not necessarily trying to solve the issue of the duality of the us versus them, but more just accepting this is what this is what it is right now. So it's it's accepting what is. Okay. okay. And what is is that we are being pitted against one another. That's what it is. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> and we're being pitted against one another by people in power who don't who want us to focus on each other instead of on their bullshit. Right. And we Correct. Know, right? Correct. Yes. So okay. But you step into the meta of it instead of in the being of it, right? So you step into the meta of it, which is this is what's happening, okay? And you go, huh, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. And you uninvest in an outcome, okay? This is the key. Okay. The only way to stay out of the bullshit is to uninvest in the outcome. And I can hear people going, but blah, 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 blah. blah. blah, blah. <laughs> I, can, I can hear it, right? I just <laughs> heard that. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> I just said, uh, Lord, tune down the volume, people. Come on now. Right. <laughs> so, but you have to uninvest in the outcome, right? This is this. So I talk to people about this all the time is that our lives are the only things that we have control over, right? Our inner being. We have minimal control over the outside of our beingness, right? We, we can make choices and we hope that they will turn out in a certain way, but the rest of the universe has choices too. And sometimes mm -hmm. shit goes sideways and that's just how it is, right? Yeah. We really only have control over ourselves and taking that intent to control and putting it outside of yourself, even during these tumultuous times is dangerous from a spiritual perspective because you are you are releasing the idea that you are the center of your universe and you are putting the outside world in control of your happiness. And Oh, Lord, your, don't do that. <laughs> where your intention goes is where your power goes. And now your power is outside of you and not inside of you. Okay. So I, I want to be really clear that from a spiritual perspective, we need to be in a place where we are inside our own power. Now, this isn't to say that you can't have positive impact. It's just saying that you can't, ha you can't be tapped into that part of yourself that knows how this is all supposed to turn out and how it works when you're stuck in the us versus them duality dynamic. When your power is not inside of you, you will not hear clearly. You will be too emotionally rolled up and, and embroiled in the situation to be able to hear the messages that you're being sent. Okay. Is, would that affect, you know, um, you've seen them on videos, TikTok, Instagram, whatever, insert video of said person losing their shit here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, if it's too opposing, right? They can't even have a conversation because for whatever side, it's either my way or the highway. That's it. They're, so, they're blocked to even yes. having that interaction. And then they're so emotionally charged with it till right. you get one beating the hell out of the other just because you're on, you have a difference of opinion. Yes. You know, and, 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 well, and we've, it's also we've, trauma. Oh, yeah. That's also a trauma response. So we need to have some compassion. Because the Karens of the world are behaving in that way because they are traumatized. And I'm not excusing the behavior. The beha behavior is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And they are traumatized. Okay. We are all traumatized. Some of us know how to handle it better than others. Yeah. Some of us have more practice. Okay. So it's just a matter of recognizing that, you know, we all have our shit, right? We're all being traumatized. We've all been traumatized and the trauma is continuing for everyone in the U S I'm, you know, that it's, it's still ongoing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but here's the thing, when you can step out of the attachment to the outcome, 
When you can get still and focused and centered in your own body, in your own beingness, when you can let go of the illusion of control that you think you have over this scenario, which you do not, do it not. is an illusion, right? Just like everything else, we've been saying this for ad nauseum forever, right? Mm -hmm. Control is an illusion. It is an illusion. When you, when you can release the, the illusion of control and step out of the fear and the panic mongering, and come back and just look at your circumstances and say, I'm okay. Everything's, you know, I, I'm, I'm not on the street. There's food in my fridge. I have a roof over my head. I have clothes on my back. I, uh -huh. I'm, I, I'm okay, right? When you can step into that space and say, I'm okay, and everything else is part of the manipulation, then you can start to look at it from an from a, 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 a broader perspective, from an experiential perspective, and you go, okay, I chose to live in these challenging times. Let me feel into why I made that choice. Let me feel into what is mine to do here. Let me check in with who I want to be in this moment. Now, don't go back in, do I want to be an activist, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying, right? I'm not talking about what role do you want to play. I'm saying, who do you want to be, okay? And I want to be calm. I want to be the voice that, that expresses love. I want to be the voice that expresses unity. I want to be the voice that, that takes people in rather than pushes people out, right? I want to be the voice of harmony and alignment. And I choose that in my life on a daily basis. This is our magic. This is our magic that we do in return. It is not a doing to the world. It is a beingness that we claim and that we foster in others. That is the way that we fight against the magic that is being done to divide everyone and to break everything down. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is the only way to fight against it is to nullify it. Right? You're not nullifying it by going out and doing anything. You're nullifying by being the difference, by supporting others in being the difference, by connecting with others and loving them and being supportive and understanding and listening, right? Listening. But you can't do that until you uninvest from the outcome because until you uninvest from the outcome, you are going to be fighting and you're going to be talking but not listening. You're going to be lecturing but not listening. You're going to be manipulating but not listening. And nothing comes out of that. So I know this is going to be difficult. I know. Because you're like, ah! and every time, I, and I'm going to tell you, just, just stop watching the freaking news. That's all I can say. Stop watching the news. Stop because, getting pulled in. <laughs> oh, my God. It will suck you in and suck the life out of you. We're all exhausted. That's the other thing is that mm -hmm. the other thing that this does is that it makes us too tired and too overwrought to engage our brains intelligently. The human mind loses 10 points of IQ when it is scared. And so we are literally being manipulated into being stupider. Okay. So you do not want to let that manipulation continue. So uninvest. I unsubscribed from a whole lot of TikTok channels when I got here. And I was just like, I can't watch this anymore. I can't watch that anymore. I just can't. Right. Because then, then you get obsessed almost yeah, yeah. and you, you get pulled in and more and more to <clears throat> that's right and because you're on a social media platform it will feed you more of the same right yep because that's what the and algorithms do no matter what platform you're on whether it's facebook it doesn't or matter Instagram or TikTok, it doesn't matter they all do it right yep so this is what i'm saying right so you have to you have to let it go the, the holding on to it is what is keeping us at loggerheads, you know, keeping us in, in conflict. And we don't want that. 
You know, we, we, we're spiritual people. We want the world to be a spiritual place. We want it to be a place where we acknowledge that we are all connected. We acknowledge that mm-hmm. we are all one. We acknowledge that the person who's having a hard time on the other side of the fence, who's been manipulated by the press as much as we have been manipulated by the press, right? And the us versus other, right? Uh, that it's all been manipulation, right? And we have to even acknowledge that those who are in power who think that manipulating the rest of the world to make them be at loggerheads so that they don't pay attention, so that they can stay in power. How sad is it that they feel like their power is dependent upon controlling and manipulating others? That's, that's sad. I'm sad by, I'm saddened by that, right? That they don't have a sense of themselves as strong enough that, that instead they need to feel like they have to control the world, right? That's, that's sad. Whether they feel like they have to do it because they feel insecure or whether they feel like they have to do it because they feel like everybody else is incompetent, I, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't care, right? It's sad. And so and- when you can find the compassion for that, when you can see that this is, this is not a path to happiness, right? You can appreciate that, that this is just something that's happening. And it's happening because there are a lot of people who have been traumatized, you know, and, and people don't know how to manage it because we've never been taught how to, right? Some of us are better than others because we grew up in it, right? And we're sitting there going, yep, I can do it. I can, I can just plow through. I will power through and I will make it happen, right? That's what we do. You know, we are the warriors of the world, but it doesn't mean that we're not traumatized too. Right? So we can find the commonality in the common trauma. We can find the connection point there and start from that place of compassion where we can recognize that, that this is where it has come from. And so when we can stop being attached to the outcome, we can start having real conversations. And we can start finding ways to connect again. And when we can acknowledge that different news media sources are providing very different stories of the exact same situations, then we can begin to understand how we're being manipulated and how that's happening and why that's happening. But again, it just is. There's no one to go, you know, running to or whatever. We just, our power is in our connectedness. Our power is in the places of connection between us. When we are together as a unit, we are not subject to the manipulations of others. We can come together and say we we all agree on these things. And if our elected officials don't agree, then they can get out. Right? And, and it's just that simple. But so long as we are fighting against each other, we are not paying attention to what's real. All right. And, and, and the truth, because the, the truth cannot be manipulated, right? right? And 2 plus 2 is 4. It's yes. not 16. It's not A squared over B. It never will be, right? right. And but the perception when, of that truth. But the perception. Yes. And that's what's being manipulated, you know, and yes. you and I have had conversations uh, lots of times. And trust me, Kelly and I are on complete opposites when it comes to some stuff and other stuff. We're like, you know what? We actually agree on this, you know, yeah. but we can we still, you know, remember when we could disagree, then go have a beer and everything was great. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, I remember, uh, you know, working for uh, uh, a friend of mine worked for lawyers and the lawyers were on two uh, lawyers in in the uh, two different law firms were best friends, and yeah. they were on opposing sides, battle it out. But then, like, hey, dude, wanna go get a drink? Yeah, let's go. And everything was cool. Right. So just be- we can have differences of opinion, and you're not mm-hmm. saying everyone must agree on everything. Correct. But it's it's the don't buy into the manipulation where it pits us against each other. Yes. Because that doesn't do any good. 
you know. And we're never going to all agree on everything. We're very different people in very different circumstances. And there's no way that you're ever always going to agree with somebody. I mean, my husband and I, we share a brain in a lot of ways. And we still have things we don't agree on, right? Yeah. And, And we're very similar creatures. So, you know, you're never going to agree with everybody all the time. What you have to do, though, is remember that what you focus on expands. And right now we're focusing on the things that we don't agree on. And therefore, that will expand. We're focusing on feeling victimized by each other, and that will expand. We're focusing on That's not healthy, how evil for anything. the other side is, and that will expand. We have to focus on what do we have in common? What are we... What can we have compassion for? Because we too have experienced it. Mm -hmm. What do we like about the other person? Right. We can't just immediately go, well, they're an idiot. Right. Because that's what we're being trained to do. Right. What you focus on expands. Be very careful where you, where you put your attention. Okay. And even, even, and even that focal point is being manipulated, I think. Yes, absolutely. as as in as in we're also being taught, um, you know, you how how dare you think for yourself? You oh. know, that's gone by the wayside, <laughs> right? That's right that's Just believe me, because I'm a and look, this goes in with your work, your family, whatever. I'm the power figure. I know better than you. Oh, child, let me tell you a story real quick. It takes ten seconds. Right. So I'm fifty some odd years old. I'm not a spring chicken. But when a certain um, thing came up in my family, oh, that's cute that you have your opinion, even though I'm an auditor and and I've been through this process. That's cute. Um, You're a youngin. So this was coming from a 70-something-year-old who considered me a youngin, even though I had experience in that realm. They were the authority figure, even though they literally didn't know anything. So what happened? They ended up coming to me for advice anyway, just on the side. Right. Because it couldn't appear to the family, you know, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. But it's the same kind of power play. You know, what we're talking about, you know, on a much grander, grander scale. scale. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then and I'll go back to to one of my favorite Dr. Phil sayings. Oh, my. I know. <laughs> but wait, you'll agree okay. with me. OK. No matter how flat a pancake is, it still does have two sides. Yeah, it's. That's valid. Right? <laughs> and you can't fall off the floor. That's my other favorite one. Okay. But, yeah. you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right? So whenever yeah. you hit rock bottom, all we can do is go up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but but keeping, knowing that even your perspective can be manipulated. You know, yeah. don't give them that power. You know, but, and this will be my question to you. Would also being mindful... Boundaries is kind of what I think of, um, or my shields kind of thing, as in, I don't want to be sucked into that. I need to hold up. I don't want to forget who I am. Right. And that's and, exactly what happens is we forget who we are. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the question? So the question would be, is that part of also setting our boundaries or uh, putting up certain shields to kind of mm-hmm. help that? Or is it more just... I will say that you really focusing. Yeah. You can tune your wards to be, to, to, you know, sort of filter out the crap. But Mm -hmm. if it, if it's still coming in through your phone and your TV and your devices, then, you know, no amount of tuning is going to make a difference. Right. So you have to tune your focus. Right. So it's, I want to be really clear. Nobody's doing anything to you. You are being being invited to play in an epic production of We Hate Mm -hmm. Each Other. Okay? That is what you are being invited into, and that is what we have been opting into a lot in the country, in the U.S., and around the world. We're, We're being invited to play in an epic production of We Hate Each Other. Okay? And I want you to think about it that way. Because in the... End, end of everything, this is all a virtual reality game, right? So it, it's really a game that we're playing. And I know that you're like, oh, but the stakes are higher. I, I understand. But this is physical reality and we are spiritual beings. 
And the stakes being higher in physical terms does not matter to spiritual beings in the and, and result of everything, right? So what you have to do is tune your focus. And you have to tune your focus as quickly as possible because you're probably way down the rabbit hole already in whatever direction you're going, right? And every direction is a freaking rabbit hole including mine, including Jules's, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and this is why I've uninvested, right? Because I recognized too late, because uh, I got in, I got into this too quickly, and I was already burnt out and overdone. And then the pandemic hit. I mean, literally, we had just been flooded out of our apartment, bought a house out of the blue, moved into a new neighborhood, had things break down in, while in the middle of a retreat that I had to run two weeks after I moved in. And, you know, then the sewer backed up and we had to replace the sewer. We hadn't even closed on the house yet. And then we had to close on the house and then the pandemic hit. Okay. I was freaking fried by the time the pandemic hit. You were I was done. Toast. I Stick was a fork. on toast, right? And so I was not in my beingness. I was not in my conscious self. And it hit and I invested because I wasn't paying attention. And that was my fault, right? I was fried. And so I missed it. And I got way down the rabbit hole and dragging myself out. Blah, 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 and I just couldn't get the perspective I needed. I kept, people kept asking me, can you give us this? And I was like, I can't. I don't want to give you something I don't have, right? And so I, I literally just left the country. I was like, I can't be here anymore. I can't. And now that I've had some distance and I've gotten back to myself, <laughs> I've got, you know, I'm back. I'm back. Yay. Yay. <laughs> but now I can tell you from a, you know, from a rational perspective that this is what the problem is, right? This is the problem. It's the, the uninvesting in the outcome and, and stepping out of the play that we're being invited to participate in. And so, please, I beg of you, uninvest for your health, for the health of those around you, for the mental well-being of everyone in your circle, uninvest in the outcome. And do, you know, as you start to, and let me be clear, unless somebody asks you, what did you do? You look happier, <laughs> right? <laughs> unless they ask you that and, and they, they will, they will, but unless they ask you, don't tell them. Okay. Just allow your beingness to be the safe haven. And eventually they will see, what are you doing? And you say, I uninvested in the outcome. And I recognize that this is just a play and I don't want to participate in the play. And so I am choosing who I want to be in each moment. I am choosing to be in connection and in love with others. I am choosing to have compassion and I'm choosing to disengage from absolutely everything that would drag me back down into the rabbit hole of misery that I was in. Okay. So curate your media, if you consume it at all. Curate what you listen to, what you pay attention to, where you put your focus, because that is the thing that drags you down the rabbit hole. And I want to be dragged down the rabbit hole of happiness, not the rabbit hole of misery. I don't know about you, but yeah, you know, I think yeah. it's a pretty good bet, right? So... Kellyism for the day. Kellyism. What you focus on expands. What you focus on expands. Choose wisely, young, young Jedi. <laughs> Thank you, Grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And for all you grasshoppers listening, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, that's all that we have time for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide in to energy, magic, and the spirit world. Um, I'm Jules, here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye. <laughs>